We've been conducting a longitudinal study in the city of St. Louis, which started in around 2002. At that point, we went to daycares, preschools, and primary care sites, and we collected a sample of children between the ages of three and six. We oversampled for children who had emotional and behavioral problems. We also included healthy kids. And then we studied them over the past 12 years. when they were between the ages of about seven to ten, we conducted our first brain scan. Children who experience conditions of poverty during the preschool period have um, less optimal brain development in a number of different areas as they enter into school age and early adolescence. Well, they do seem to impact um, in, uh, specifically the hippocampus, which is an area that is um, memory and adaptive stress coping. Um, it's involved in those processes. So we know that um, experiencing poverty in, in negatively impacts the hippocampus as, as well as other emotion regulatory regions of the brain. What we've also shown is that children who are reared in conditions of poverty, who have high, who experience higher levels of maternal support, um, experience less of the negative effects of poverty. So we find that maternal support is a very important protective ingredient in the poverty risk trajectory. from our data and from and data from a number of other research studies that when you support the early parent-child relationship, you get the parent more involved with the child, interacting with the child, spending more time with them, being more nurturing. We find that you know there's much better emotional outcomes, there's better educational outcomes, and in our study we see better brain outcomes as well. If we focus our public health efforts on enhancing parental support or caregiver support um, early in childhood, there seems to be early sensitive periods when the effects of nurturance and support have a more powerful effect on brain development. This would be a very, very good social investment for America's children.